it's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, skincare and oolong tea addict. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the questions I get asked really, really often. Is chemical or physical sunscreen better? I covered this topic quite a bit in my sunscreen and makeup video, but I wanted to go more in depth with it with this video because so many people have been asking me about it. If you're into skincare and you have questions about sunscreen, I highly recommend going to that video and giving it a watch because in that video, apart from the fact that I think it's awesome because I made the video, obviously, um, I've also put a lot of answers to the common questions I get about sunscreen in there. And it isn't just about makeup and sunscreen, it's also about wearing daily sunscreen in general. And so the answers to your questions might also be in there. So back to this question, is chemical or physical sunscreen better? There are tons of misconceptions online and there's lots and lots of myths floating around around this topic. So I'm going to try to cover all of these. Sunscreens stop UV light from getting to your skin and damaging it, which can lead to skin cancer and aging. Sunscreen ingredients are often divided into physical and chemical, which aren't great names because hopefully I don't have to explain to you that everything is a chemical, whether it's an ingredient that's from nature or man-made. Water, DNA, oxygen, all of these are chemicals. So both chemical and physical sunscreens are chemicals. Most people say that physical sunscreens are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, while chemical sunscreens are everything else. So for example, oxybenzone, avobenzone, tinosorb S and M, octocrylene, and so on. The original idea was that chemical and physical sunscreens work in different ways, but now we know that they actually don't. The idea was that, in theory, chemical sunscreens would absorb UV light and turn it into heat via their chemical structure, while physical sunscreens scatter and reflect UV away from your skin due to their physical particle size. But in reality, there's a lot of overlap. Tinosorb M has a structure that looks like a lot of chemical sunscreens, so it absorbs UV and turns it into heat, but it's also made into particles that can scatter and reflect some of the UV light. That makes Tinosorb M both physical and chemical. Even the ingredients that most people refer to as physical sunscreens, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, mostly absorb UV light and turn it into heat. They only scatter and reflect about 5% of incoming UV. A better way of describing the two different types of sunscreen ingredients is organic and inorganic. So organic sunscreens are those that are based on a carbon chain structure, while inorganic sunscreens are minerals or ionic compounds. So Tinosorb M would count as an organic sunscreen, while zinc oxide and titanium dioxide would be inorganic. So now that we know what we're dealing with, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the two types of sunscreen. The biggest advantage of organic or chemical sunscreens is that you can get a much higher protection level. You can get over SPF 50 with both organic and inorganic sunscreens, but for longer wavelengths of UVA, called UVA1, there are a lot less options. In the US, there's only really three options for blocking these longer wavelengths of UVA. The main two are the physical slash inorganic sunscreen zinc oxide and the organic sunscreen avobenzone. There's also Ecamshul or Mixoral SX, which is patented by L'Oreal, so it's only available in a few sunscreens. In other countries, there are a few more options for UVA1 protection, but they're all chemical or organic sunscreen ingredients. So for example, Tinosorbs S and M, Uvinyl A+, and Mexoral XL. It's impossible to say for sure how much protection a sunscreen gives without testing it. But the highest UVA protection that I've seen for inorganic sunscreens is about a UVA PF of around 20. The highest UVA PF values that you'll see are around UVA PF 40, which is always for chemical or organic sunscreens. So if your skin is particularly prone to pigmentation or aging, then an organic sunscreen or chemical sunscreen gives you better options. Another big advantage of organic sunscreens is that they tend to give you less white cast. Inorganic sunscreens, particularly titanium dioxide, tends to make you look quite white, especially if your skin is quite dark. So for example, my skin's around NC25 in MAC foundation shades, and with a lot of physical sunscreens, I look weirdly white. This isn't really surprising because zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, the mineral sunscreens, are actually used to make white paint. 
To make them more transparent, they can be ground up into smaller particles such as microparticles and nanoparticles, but it can still be too light for some people. And because sunscreen protection depends on how much of the ingredients you have on your face, you want to go with more sunscreen rather than less sunscreen. And so, if a sunscreen is making you go white, you're going to want to put on less of it, and so you'll get less protection. Sunscreens tend to have really tricky textures. Organic sunscreens tend to be greasier, while inorganic sunscreens tend to be thicker. And depending on your skin type and skin conditions, one type might work better for you. I personally prefer organic sunscreens because I have quite a few that feel like moisturizer. And I've actually had an inorganic sunscreen break me out within a few hours of applying it. There are also some combination sunscreens which contain both types. Here's where inorganic sunscreens really shine. Inorganic sunscreens tend to cause fewer allergic and irritant reactions. Like I mentioned before, in the US, there are only really three ingredients that protect against UVA1, zinc oxide, avobenzone, and mexoral SX. Mexoral SX is only in a few sunscreens, and so most of the time you only have those two options, zinc oxide and avobenzone. Avobenzone can be really irritating if it's at over 3% concentration, and it can cause allergies if your skin's sensitive. So if you do have sensitive skin or an avobenzone allergy, then zinc oxide is going to be your best option. However, if you're elsewhere in the world, or if you have access to sunscreens outside of the US, then you might have access to the newer UVA protection filters, such as Tinosorb S and M and Uvinyl A+. And these protect against longer UVA1 wavelengths without being particularly allergenic or irritating. There are a few other sunscreen ingredients that tend to cause allergic or irritating reactions, and these are all chemical or organic sunscreens. Not all of them will cause reactions, but these ones are the ones that tend to be the culprits. Octocrylene, oxybenzone, parba, padamate O, and en enza enzacamine. Enzacamine? Enzacamine. So now that we've covered the pros and cons of organic or chemical sunscreens and inorganic or physical sunscreens, let's talk about some common myths about these sunscreen ingredients that don't really make a big difference. I'm sort of sick of saying organic or chemical and inorganic or physical sunscreen each time. So even though organic and inorganic are the more correct options, I'm going to say chemical and physical because that's what 90% of the stuff online says. And so even though it's less correct, it's more popular. So I'm going to go with that. Sometimes you'll see advice that says you need to apply a chemical sunscreen on bare skin, but physical sunscreens go on top last over your makeup. You might also see that chemical sunscreens need to be applied 20 minutes before you go outside so it has time to activate, but physical sunscreens work immediately. Both of these myths are based on the idea that chemical sunscreens need to absorb into skin and bind before they start to work, and both of these myths are false. All sunscreen ingredients work immediately straight out of the bottle. Here's a demonstration I made for the sunscreen and makeup video. I've applied chemical and physical sunscreens to this piece of paper, along with a moisturizer that doesn't have sunscreen in it, and I'm shining a UV light on it. The dark color is where the sunscreen is absorbing UV. You can see that for both sunscreens, they're working immediately without any wait time. You should still apply all sunscreens a little bit before you go outside so that it has time to form a continuous film and dry down so it won't move as much. But you can apply all sunscreens in the same way. The next myth is that physical sunscreens are better because they're natural. Firstly, natural things aren't better than synthetic man-made things. I've made a whole video on this which I've linked in the caption. Secondly, physical sunscreens aren't even really that natural. Firstly, they need to be processed to get rid of toxic contaminants, and this requires heating them up to really, really unnaturally high temperatures. Plus, they need to be coated in synthetic chemicals to stop them from being photocatalytic, which means they react in sunlight to produce free radicals. If you opt for the uncoated version, then it tends to clump up on your skin and in the bottle and you get patchy protection. The next myth is that once UV is converted to heat by a chemical sunscreen, that heat will then damage your skin. But the amount of heat that's produced is really imperceptibly tiny. 
Plus, as I mentioned earlier, physical sunscreens actually absorb 95% of UV and turn that into heat. So there's only really a 5% difference between a chemical sunscreen and a physical sunscreen in terms of heat. The myth that you need to reapply chemical sunscreens but not physical sunscreens is based on the idea that chemical sunscreens aren't photostable, which means that they break down after absorbing too much UV and you'll need to replace the chemical sunscreen that's been used up by the UV. This used to be true for older sunscreens, but these days there are lots of sunscreens available that are photostable. The most photo-unstable combination is avobenzone and octanoxate, and so you should reapply that every two hours once you've been in the sun. However, you should really be applying all sunscreens for every two hours of sun exposure, and really two hours of total time even without sun exposure. The main reason that it's recommended that you reapply sunscreen isn't because of photo instability. It's because the sunscreen film on your skin tends to shift around and off your skin as you move around throughout the day, and so you need to reapply it to get an even layer that will give you even protection again. So if you're getting a lot of sun exposure, if you're in direct sun, if you're outdoors, if you're playing sports, you should be reapplying your sunscreen every two hours, or even more if you're sweating heavily or if you're swimming. However, studies on daily sunscreen use found significant benefits when you apply sunscreen only once a day. And so if you're just using sunscreen under your makeup and you're not doing a lot of exercise and you're not getting a lot of sun exposure, you can reapply less frequently and still get lots of benefits. It's sort of true that you can use less of a physical sunscreen. You need to use the same weight of sunscreen but physical sunscreens tend to be denser than chemical sunscreens. And so on average, you can use around 20% or one fifth less of a physical sunscreen by volume, but not by weight. So even though you're using a smaller volume, you still end up with the same weight of sunscreen. This is a big talking point, and it doesn't help that organic sunscreens are called chemical sunscreens, which makes them sound a lot scarier than physical sunscreens. But it's important to remember that there are a lot of different chemical sunscreens, and they all have different effects. Some of them get into your skin and into your body much more easily, while some of them can't get into your skin much at all. Some of them absorb a lot more UV more efficiently than other ones, and so you end up having less of them in each sunscreen. And they all have different hormonal effects. Another thing that you should be aware of is that you'll often hear that ingredients have been found in breast milk and urine, which again sounds really scary, but there's a few issues with that. Firstly, we have really sophisticated machines and analytical techniques that can detect really tiny amounts of chemicals in all sorts of things. And so finding something in a particular substance doesn't mean it's in a high enough concentration to actually do anything. And it's important to remember that that ingredient has to be in a high enough concentration to do something to be worth worrying about. For example, there's tons of water in breast milk and urine, but that's completely fine because water is safe. The chemical sunscreen with the strongest hormonal effect is oxybenzone, and that's according to in vitro and animal studies. But these studies found that you would need much higher concentrations than that you'd use in everyday life. One dermatology paper calculated that you would need to use oxybenzone sunscreen continuously for 277 years to get a hormonal effect. Other sunscreens that have had hormonal effects in studies are enzacamine, padamate O, octanoxate, and homosalate. Again, the amounts used in these studies would convert to way, way larger concentrations than the amounts that we would be exposed to through sunscreen. One paper called these concentrations clinically unobtainable, which means you're not going to see them in normal people. And they're far, far less likely to have a noticeable effect than oxybenzone, which is still considered safe. Everyone has different standards of risk, so it's up to you if you want to avoid these ingredients, even though they're all currently considered safe. But if you had to avoid one, oxybenzone would probably be the one that you should avoid. The physical sunscreens zinc oxide and titanium dioxide have to be ground up into extremely tiny particles to avoid looking like white face paint. And as I mentioned before, they are actually used as pigments in white paint. The particles are often either microparticles, which are 100 to 2,500 nanometers across, or even smaller nanoparticles, which are less than 100 nanometers in length. Nanoparticles can potentially make reactions happen in your body, and it's a particular concern in UV light. 
But the studies so far have found that nanoparticles don't really get very deep into your skin, only into the dead layers of the stratum corneum. It's possible that they can penetrate further if you put the sunscreen on broken skin, but again, they're currently considered safe. Both chemical and physical sunscreens have been found to react in UV light to produce highly reactive free radicals, which are substances that have an unpaired electron, which makes them able to attack and react with lots of things in your body, such as DNA, lipids, and cells. This is a concern because free radical damage is the same way that UVA causes aging. While this sounds very scary, these studies were generally performed in vitro with cell lines, while studies on humans have found that sunscreens will reduce skin cancer and aging. It's also worth remembering that these reactions only really happen when UV hits the sunscreen, and so they generally only occur within the sunscreen film or in the top dead layers of your skin. So after all of that, here's the moral of the story. Use whatever sunscreen works best for your skin type, whether it's oily or dry, skin concerns like hyperpigmentation and acne, and your budget. Ideally, what you want is a sunscreen that has high protection, so SPF 30 or above, and broad spectrum protection, so it protects you against the longer wavelengths of UVA, as well as the shorter wavelengths that are measured by SPF. I personally like using sunscreens with newer organic filters because I'm really prone to hyperpigmentation. My dad is basically one giant mole, and so genetically I'm screwed. So what I want is high UVA protection, and I want it to be photostable. So my favourite filters have been Tinosorb S and M. I also have a massive preference for sunscreens that feel really nice on your skin. I'll be doing a longer sunscreen review later, but right now my favourite sunscreens are Ultraceuticals and Natio. I'm also a fan of Bioderma and La Roche-Posay sunscreens, even though I found that the textures aren't that great for my skin and makeup routine, but they have really, really high protection. I've listed a few other sunscreens in the caption that I've heard good things about, but I haven't personally tried them before. And that's all from me today. So I hope you found this video useful. If you found it useful and interesting, I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel. You can also check out my blog for lots and lots of stuff on science and beauty. And you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook if you want to get more stuff on beauty science.